Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Native Tater channel. Art right, today we're talking about how to add a router to your T-Mobile home internet. Now this applies to any of the T-Mobile's gateways. This one right here is the Arcadian one. Uh, there's also a Sagemcom and a Nokia one. It's all the same process here. It's actually very straightforward and there's a very simple way to do it. Uh, but I'll talk about some things you might want to watch out for or some tips and tricks to help make things better and more robust for you. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use this guy. This is a Chester Cheetah. This is actually a modem and a router, but I don't have a SIM card in there, so I'm going to treat it just like a, a wireless router to give me Wi-Fi signal, and I'll show you how you can um, do it. Now, to be honest with you, the most basic answer is you take the Ethernet cable, and you go from the back port, either one of the yellow ports there, you plug it in, and then you plug it into the WAN port of your existing wireless router, and for the most part, that should work with the default settings of both units. But there are some drawbacks to doing that, and that's what I kind of want to talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to plug it in here. Uh, so now it's in the WAN port of this um, Chester router here. And what it will do is, um, because it's the default settings, it has a dynamic IP address, which I guess you just saw that it turned uh, from red to blue. So default settings, you plug it in and it works. And that should work if you have a Netgear, if you have an Asus, if you have TP-Link, any of that kind of stuff, it should work. Now, there's a couple things that I would really recommend you do. And one of them is to turn off the Wi-Fi on the T-Mobile gateway. And the reason for that is a couple um, reasons, really. One is it allows this device to run cooler and have less processing going on so everyone has found it is more robust even if you don't have problems it seems to run better with the Wi-Fi turned off additionally it's less interference so anytime you're in a wireless environment the more signals you have the more likely you are to have some kind of interference or if they're on the same channel then you can have slowdowns. in fact I was just talking to my brother who has a couple different wireless routers at his place and he saw a three times faster improvement. So it went from like 180 or something to like 470 megabits per second for his setup when he um, separated his uh, wireless channels because they were on the same channel and there was interference going on. So it doesn't happen to everyone, but it can help happen uh, to you. So it's easy to turn it off. Now, I say it's easy to turn off, but let me show you. There is an, a, a new app. I have uh, lots of videos on my channel, and I encourage you to, to subscribe and to check them out. I'll put some links down in the video description below to some playlists to help you. But um, one of the more recent um, additions that the um, user base from T-Mobile has made is a app. So there's now an app to go in and turn off your Wi-Fi. So to do that, you just need to be connected to your um, gateway either on a computer or on a phone or tablet and I have a whole video that goes into that so I'll link that down below but it allows you to go in there and turn off the Wi-Fi on that device so that's something I would I would tell you to do now let's go into my router settings and just show you what things I do like to mess with alright so I just logged into my router here now this one is obviously um, different than maybe some of your other ones where it says it's um, 192.168.100.1 to log in most of the time it's on the bottom of your router or the back of it there'll be a sticker that will tell you the address that you type in to get to the interface and here we can see um, I can go to my internet now uh, your device might call it a WAN or you know, WAN for the um, for the uh, internet portion and you can see here this one has DHCP don't get that confused with the DHCP server that the device actually runs but this is how it's getting its IP address and so it's getting its IP address from the T-Mobile gateway using DHCP which means this device ask that device what its address should be you could also set it up manually if you want to do a static IP but I don't really encourage you to do that unless you have a true need to do that. But what I do encourage is a manual DNS server. So this DNS server, this is what your device goes to to look up basically the address book. So if you think about a um, an address book where you would say, hey, you know, I need um, Billy Bob's address. You go in there and you look for Billy Bob because that's how you know um, his name. 
and then a old school um, you know um, phone book would give you his address and phone number DNS is sort of similar you say hey I want to go to you know tmobile.com and the DNS says okay to get to tmobile.com it's actually this long address with a bunch of numbers and uh, decimals in there and so I don't like T-Mobile's DNS server. I've had problems with it, with it flaking out. It also sometimes confuses or drops out and makes uh, Google Home and other devices think there's not internet when there really is. So for the DNS, I would put something um, else in there. There's lots of different ones. You can just do a Google search for which ones to use. But one of them is 8.8.8.8. Um, .8 and that is a Google one. There's also things like Cloudfare and others. And so you can do like a 1.0.0.1, I believe, is a, another one that's Cloudflare. So those are two DNSs that you could have in there, and then you hit save, and you can have that. That is certainly uh, something I would, um, I would have you do on yours. And so that's the main settings that I would say um, you'd want to have is the DNS and have the dynamic IP. Dynamic IP address means that what it thinks is the uh, public IP address is going to be a 192.168.12 point something and probably a point two, point three, point four, something like that or I think by default it might start at uh, point one hundred um, or something like that but what you might be wondering is like well what about my port forwarding what about um, you know getting a public IP address this does not solve that so adding your own router does not actually solve any of that stuff as far as getting a public IP you're still behind the uh, NAT so if you if you do gaming you get an extra layer of NAT by doing that you cannot turn off that there's no bridge mode on these uh, gateways or anything like that and additionally T-Mobile has this thing called CG NAT which is carrier grade NAT so on their network um, you are um, a one of many users that goes through their network and then has a single public IP address so you can't get directly to your uh, gateway from outside um, using their network you can do it through like a VPN or reverse proxy um, or if you have their business 5G internet then you can pay for a static IP that you can then access but for their home internet there is not a direct option from T-Mobile and adding port forwarding on your existing router won't work because the request can never get to your personal router right it, it gets stopped at the T-Mobile network so um, then you might say well why would I want my own personal um, Wi-Fi router set up and the reason I do it for me is because I have six different Wi-Fi routers set up as a large mesh network and actually covers multiple acres of my properties and like four buildings so that's where the stock T-Mobile gateway could never do that, and it doesn't have direct mesh capability. So I hook mine up to my ASUS system, and then it covers everything. The other thing is I don't have to change any of my devices, like um, you know saved um, wireless SSID and password, because all I did was change out the T-Mobile system from my old AT&T system. So you might be in the same boat where you went from satellite or DSL or maybe even cable over to T-Mobile, and if you keep your main um, Wi-Fi router, you don't have to change any of those settings. If you don't want to do that and you're just trying not to change the settings of your devices, you could just go into the T-Mobile gateway and change the wireless name, so the SSID and the password to match what your old one was, right? So if you had, um, you know, Comcast cable, for example, and your SSID was Comcast five 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 and you know there was some password there one two three four you could go in here to the um, settings using the T-Mobile home internet app and just change the uh, Wi-Fi SSID to that Comcast five 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 and the password and then all your devices will automatically connect to this guy um, so that's another option you have but really it's pretty straightforward to do it and there's not a whole lot of um, things that uh, you can change if you want more options as far as you know getting some more um, access then go into a third party uh, modem router is the way to go this Chester Cheetah is one of them you can actually put the sim card directly in it 
and then you can do band locking, tower locking, you can do all that kind of stuff in addition to having a Wi-Fi router all built into one. So if you want to find out more about that, I have some links down in the description below. If you have questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I do try to read them and answer them. So thanks and take care.